These are five wood storage mistakes that you should avoid at all costs. Well, at most costs. Let's go. Number one on the list is acclimation. What does that mean? It means when you bring the wood into the shop, it needs to sit in the environment. It's gonna be cut and milled in for a while. Now what's recommended is a week or two, but I know for a fact that a lot of times you don't have that much time. 48 hours really is minimum, but there are cases where you're gonna bring it in, you're gonna cut it, you're gonna put your wood project together without it acclimating. Now, we're talking best practices. Now, why would you wanna do that? Number one is it needs to adjust to the humidity as well as the temperature in your shop. I have a climate controlled shop now, but for years I didn't. And so it just had to adjust to whatever the shop was at the time, whether that be hot or cold, etc. So it just depends on if you're having your wood shipped to you from out of state, out of area, or if you're picking it up at your local lumber yard or home store, that's gonna play a part in the process. For instance, if I go to my local store, pick out some lumber and bring it home and use it right away, theoretically it's going to be okay because I'm only a few miles away from that area. We're the same temperature, same humidity, et cetera. But I do get hardwood shipped in because we can't buy them locally. And those I do absolutely let them sit for a week, two, sometimes months before I actually get to using them. But 48 hours is a good, minimum rule of thumb. Now the reason you want it to acclimate to your environment is because of the humidity change, the temperature change. If you use it right away, there is a chance that that wood is going to bow and bend and split, all that good stuff, bad stuff, when you use it inside a project and that's where things go bad and that's what you're trying to avoid. So letting it acclimate is gonna help. One of the best things I ever bought for this shop and I still use it even with climate control is my dehumidifier. It is a little bit pricey. You can get smaller models, but I chose this one specifically because it will keep the humidity in this shop between 30 and 50% and I can just leave it on 24 seven. I can connect a hose to it, run that outside and it's always running when the humidity gets above whatever you said of that. That has helped the wood movement and the usability of the lumber that I keep in the shop tremendously. I would highly recommend considering one of those, especially if you're in a humid environment. I'll link to one in the description that I have, but feel free to research and find one that works for your shop. Number two on the list is storing lumber directly on the ground or on the concrete if you have a concrete floor. This is a huge no-no. You should avoid this at all costs. Now, it makes sense why you wouldn't store it on the ground, I think, but on concrete, you think you're safe, but you're not. The reason is concrete is porous, so it absorbs the moisture in the air, and moisture is heavier than air, so all the time it's gonna fall and settle on your concrete, whether you see it or not. Then when you put your lumber on the ground or on the concrete, your lumber starts soaking up that, just like a sponge would. Now, lumber is also porous if you think of straws being stacked together. That's basically the enlarged version of wood because as the grain runs long ways, on your lumber, that's basically straws are running, microscopic straws running all the way up that board. So it's soaking up that wood, that moisture. And what that's gonna do is cause the wood to expand. Then when you get it off the ground and use it, it's going to contract. And then you're gonna start seeing some major problems as far as splitting, bowing, twisting, all the bad things we're trying to avoid. So keep it off the ground, keep it off the concrete. One thing I did before having any storage in the shop for lumber is I would just take some small scrap pieces and stack them on the ground and then lay the boards that I wanted to keep on top of those. That gets them up off the ground, allows some airflow in there, and it prevents that from soaking any moisture off the floor. Number three on the list is avoid storing your lumber in direct sunlight if at all possible. Now, this shop has windows on the garage. There's also a window back here that I blocked years ago with a piece of styrofoam. You may have seen it in some older videos. And the reason I did that was to prevent that sun from coming in because I used to store my lumber right here on the ground. And I didn't want that sunlight directly impacting or directly contacting my lumber because when it does that, you're getting a few things. It's heating the wood up, which causes it to heat and cool, heat and cool, which is gonna cause it to twist and bend. Also, it's gonna dry it out and discolor it and cause it to be a different color than any of the other spots if it sits there long enough. If you store your lumber outside or in a shed or under a shed, be sure to cover that with a tarp or some plastic sheeting or something like that just to keep the direct sun and the elements off of it. Number four on the list is not properly supporting the lumber while it's being stored. Now, when I first started, I again, stacked the lumber back here behind me on the floor, and I supported that with several pieces of, say, a scrap two before or a scrap something, and made sure I had several pieces along the way so that it was supported all the way across. So if it was eight or 10 foot long, there may be five or six of those pieces perpendicular to the wood so that it's always supported. What I did was actually take some concrete blocks and put on top of my lumber stack 
to help weight that down and that surprisingly kept anything from twisting and bowing as it acclimated to the shop. I highly recommend doing that if you're going to have lumber just hanging out. The main reason you want to support the wood or lumber across the length of the board is because if we take for instance where we're going to pretend my workbench is the ground if you put a support here on the end and then another one here on the other end and then you let that sit for a month what's going to happen just the natural weight of this board right in the center it's going to bow it's just physics it's math whatever you want to call it it's just going to bow so on boards five six feet i would probably go ahead and put another one or two in the middle just to keep everything nice and equally supported all the way across and another consideration is like my garage floor is extremely unlevel over a course of two feet it may drop two inches in some places so you have to kind of take that in consideration when you're uh, building your supports for your lumber if you're stacking those on the ground be sure to account for that unevenness in your garage floor if it's bad off now one thing to consider is plywood really doesn't apply to most of this stuff as far as moisture is concerned because it doesn't absorb the moisture expand and contract like regular wood does it'll absorb moisture but it won't expand and contract now it does need to be stored flat and or vertically straight up and down because it will bow over time especially if it if the humidity is changing and temperatures change and things like that but as far as it moving in and out it doesn't do that a little over a year ago i started storing most of my lumber vertically and the reason i did that was space saving now when you do store it vertically plywood mdf anything like that needs to be as straight up as possible without it causing any chance for it to tip over and when you use your one buys two buys anything like that to store vertically make sure it's well supported because you don't want it leaning too far against the wall or it will have a tendency to bow as long as you can keep it fairly straight up and supported i like to use my plywood to support my one buys and things like that because it keeps a good flat surface that keeps anything from bowing or twisting and the same thing goes on the ground i keep my lumber up off the ground with scrap pieces just to keep it from absorbing any moisture from the concrete vertical is probably my favorite way to store lumber another way i store lumber and keep it out of the way and keep it nice and flat and straight or lumber racks i bought this on amazon myself i've actually got two of them i'm going to install another one soon this is a great way to support or to store shorter stock in other words four or five foot pieces most of my hardwoods i store up here walnut maple several other species this was extremely easy to install i mean all you have to do is make sure you're getting into a stud because it's going to be supporting weight so you want to make sure it's nice and secure i was a little concerned at first that it wasn't going to be strong enough but it's been up here for a couple of months now zero issues and as you can see it's stacked full of some really nice hardwood i was also a little concerned with it only having two supports that it would bow or twist or cause the lumber to do that but i have had zero issues with that and it's spaced out perfectly so that four or five foot pieces are supported nicely and they don't twist or bend it's a really nice product from bora and they're very inexpensive so if you're interested i'll link a link in the description for that of course there's also an option to be able to store your lumber on a cart that you can roll around your shop the reason I never opted for that was I just didn't have space for it. Those things are going to take up quite a bit of space. And in a two car garage, I can't lose any more space than I've already lost to essential items like a miter station, a workbench, or even the storage unit behind me. So it just depends on your shop, your needs, on whether a cart would work for you. Another great option is storage shelves. Uh, for years, I used Husky brand shelves and I was able to store my lumber on those shelves. They're nice and flat, they're well supported, and they're up off the ground. This is an excellent way to get your lumber off the ground and have a storage space for it. I used two of them for years and it worked perfect for the shop. I highly recommend those shelves and they're really inexpensive for what you're getting. Super well made and can hold a lot of weight. Number five thing you should always avoid is storing your lumber in a damp or humid place or environment. Now, sometimes that can't be avoided, especially if you live in the South like me, but again, adding a dehumidifier really helped that. Or just keeping the garage door shut will actually help that as well if you're able to. Now, if you're in an area where you can't or you don't have the room to do that or you don't have a space to do that in, storage sheds, things like that will also help. Just try to keep everything up off the ground and covered so that it's not damp or wet. For instance, my local lumber store, Barton's, actually stores all of their lumber outside. There is no indoor storage like you see at Home Depot or Lowe's, but it is covered. And for the most part, it stays fairly dry. Now, if it's really pouring down rain, I try to avoid getting lumber from there for a day or two after so it can dry out in that open air. But with it being covered with a light rain, it usually never gets wet. Of course, it is stored outdoors, so it's gonna pick up some of that moisture 
from the outside air, especially when it's raining or damp. That's one of the reasons why we revert back to number one. We let it acclimate. So if you pick up the lumber from the lumber store and it's damp, it's wet, it's been raining, bring it to your shop, let it sit for a week, if at all possible, two weeks. If not, minimum 48 hours, let it acclimate to the temperature and humidity in your shop. You know what time it is, power tip time. The reason we go through all of this trouble is to try to minimize wood movement. In other words, the bowing, the twisting, the splitting, anything that's gonna damage your project later, that's what we're trying to avoid by storing this properly and keeping it as dry as possible. With that said, don't be overly concerned with wood movement. It's in my experience in the last six years of building things out of construction grade pine, building things out of hardwood, basically anything uh, furniture wise, end tables, dining tables, table tops, breadboard ends. I've had very, very minimal movement in any of that. And when I say minimal, during certain times of the year, you can feel maybe two boards aren't perfectly lined up like they were when I built it. There may be a 64th of an inch that you can feel a little lip there. But for the most part, it's moving so small, so minor of movements over the course of months, it's not gonna make that much difference. So don't go overboard with worry and concern about wood movement. The main thing we're looking for when we bring lumber into the shop is to keep it from bowing, moving, and twisting before you use it. Once you make your project with it, 99% of the time, it's going to be fine. I made this little end table several years ago, and this is construction grade lumber that I bought at my local lumber store. It's pine. I bought it, brought it home and made it probably the same day or within a few days of buying it. So wood movement was never a concern, number one, because this is such a small piece. Even on some of my end tables that we built or over the years, I would buy the lumber that week and buy and build with it. So wood movement is something that you think about, but don't not build just because you're worried about it. It'll be fine. Now these are not end all be all tips and tricks, but this is kind of what I have experienced and learned over the last several years that's worked for me. Now, if it's something else works for you, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, you'll love the five woodworking tips and tricks you've probably never seen before. Click that box to watch the video. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.